joy, peace, tranquility, vibrancy, and wellness. Isn't this what you want instead of constant stress? That's what host Rochelle Lawson is going to help you with on Blissful Living. There are many ways to reduce stress, some you may not even know about. Doesn't a little peace and tranquility sound like just what you've been looking for? Relax for a few minutes with Rochelle. She's the queen of feeling fabulous. Hello, everyone, and welcome to your hour of Blissful Living. I am Rochelle Lawson, the queen of feeling fabulous, your host for this fabulous show. And today my guest is Dr. Lori Schmidt, the best-selling author of Fire Up Your Fat Burn. Now that has got to be intriguing you already. And we are going to be talking about some very, very interesting things with regards to burning your fat and how you can utilize the information that um, Dr. Lori is going to be discussing with us today to help you, of course, live optimally healthy and well, have that blissful life that you so seek and desire. But also, she's going to give you some information that you may not even know with regards to the toxic effects of certain foods and your lifestyle choices and how they can create inflammation in your body. Now, Dr. Dr. Lori Schmeck, I'm sorry, I'm just going to call you Dr. Lori because it's easier, if that's okay. Yes. I don't want to mess up your last name. Um, <laughs> no but problem. Her expertise drew the attention of the Women's Information Network, and this is where she has her own health show. Now, I bring you guys really fabulous guest. Of course, you know that. I say that every week. But check out Lori. She um, is one of the top 16 fitness. I'm sorry. Let me re- let me go back. She is one of the top 16 health and fitness experts alongside such names as Dr. Oz, which everyone knows, and David Zizinko, the author of Eat This, Not That, and the Huffington Post also recognized her as one of the top 35 diet and nutrition experts, okay? So she, this is what we're going to be talking about today, you guys. She is also a health and wealth she's also a health expert for the ABC TV show Good Morning Texas. So she she's, you know, a southern girl maybe. I don't know, we're going to explore that. And then also, she's a leading authority on inflammation and and its role in weight loss preventing disease and optimizing health. And that is something I know you guys need to know about because it's going to help you so much with regards to the stress that you may have around your weight or, you know, with the new year. We always try to make New Year's resolutions and things of that nature with re- regards to our weight. So Dr. Lori is going to help us understand some of these key uh, points that I just sp- uh, spoke about, which she's an expert at, with regards to helping us feel better, look better, be better. So without further ado, let me welcome Dr. Lori Schmeck to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Rochelle. What a nice intro. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Very honored to be here, by the way. Oh, thank you. I'm so honored to have you. You know I could have talked thank more and more you. about some of the other things you, you, you've you done, such as you, fe- you were featured in Health Magazine. Oh, and then... The Ricky oh, Lee. you're so sweet. <laughs> the the Ricky Lee, so much other stuff you've done. So you so oh. I know the listeners that you are a fabulous, fabulous guest. And Thank you. Are you. And so, that's, you know, I know people are curious. It's like, you know, first of all, I just want to kind of break. We're going to just break today's mm-hmm. conversation into, a, you know, probably like three little, three little things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, People that are familiar, first of all, you guys familiar with the show, you know I'm, I'm going to tell you this is a great time to get out a piece of paper, pen, and be prepared to take notes because she's going to she's going to lay down some powerful information that I'm sure you haven't heard about anywhere else before. And so now that I've gotten that out of the way and prepared my audience and um, for them to receive your information, mm-hmm. can you tell us, you know, there's so many things that we see that the media projects to us with regards to our, our body image. Mm-hmm. Specifically, women, we tie into this. You know, we're not we're not the size two. We're we're too fat. We're too thin. We're we're not mm-hmm. right. So this, that, and another. But we all have like we when a lot of women look at their body, they don't look at the positive aspects of the body. They look at the negative things or the things that they don't like. Right. And so I just want to jump right into 
negative body image and how how do we shift negative body image to one that's more healthier and you know wholesome for our, for our self image well it's it first of all to understand that you know um most women buy into that very per- pervasive cultural myth of thinness and beauty okay and we're not just talking about thin we're talking thin thin and 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 looks that are not normal or average, I should say. So uh, when doing this, such as reading magazines or watching celebrities on TV, the red carpet effect, I always call it, um, it leaves a woman feeling that she's not thin enough, not beautiful enough, she's not worthwhile, um, that she's not successful enough, and that um, she's just, really at that point in in those feelings contingent um, upon what other people think she should look like, really. Other people's parameters. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's somebody else's idea of beauty. When um, What I do is I try to step in and help people understand that it's really about health, optimal health in the end, and that um, being obese is not healthy, okay? And so that's really where where it needs to go. And, you know, the truth is, and I ask people, what is optimal health to you? And when I ask this question, I usually get some variation of um, that guy with the six-pack abs or that waist-thin actress, Mm -hmm. which obviously couldn't be more uh, from the truth. (laughs) So, you know, it's so really, it's about optimal health and it's about making choices that, really help reduce the risk of disease processes so that you're living more energetically, you're, uh, you have a vibrant life, you're, you have optimal mental and emotional balance. Really, all these things happen naturally when you're healthy. Oh, yes. You know, um, there, there are people, okay, you know how mm-hmm. we see the actresses Mm-hmm. There's that little size two, and mm-hmm. you know we. And, and you're right. People, women look at that, and they're like, "Well, I'm not like so and so. She's so tiny." Blah, right. blah, blah, blah. But let me let me give you this aspect. Mm-hmm. I was um, a kid that was really skinny growing mm-hmm. up, and people, you know, would always say, "You know, honey, you're so skinny. You know, mm-hmm. do you eat? You know, this and that, and you know." And I was athletic and, you know, all that good stuff. And, mm-hmm. and, and they, and they thought that was, you know, people, when people say that, they really think they're complimenting you. And what it did was, you know, made me become even more self-conscious about being thin. That's, you, that's you know, the so flip that, side, isn't it? Exactly. So yeah. this negative image about exactly. you know, being thin. I didn't have, you know, you know, the, I didn't have any boobs. I didn't have any butt. Mm-hmm. I was any girl, you know. And then fast forward to, I'm going to say, 20 years later, or more than 20 years later, but my <laughs> daughter, who's, you know, she's always been really tall and mm-hmm. and thin, and people used to come to her when she was probably like in the sixth or seventh grade and would be like, oh, honey, do you eat? You know, oh, you're so thin. Do you eat? You know, here she was this beautiful, <laughs> long, lean, tall, athletic uh-huh. teacher, and she would just have straight attitude like, like, yeah, I eat, but she was very confident and and had a very positive self image about her body, whereas you know mine was a little different, right? Yeah, and it and it does that really is truth in how you respond, mm-hmm. right? And, it, and your reaction. It is. And yeah, so the reality is is that you are enough. You're more than enough, right? Mm-hmm. In right now, in this moment, whoever you are, and however insecure you're feeling about your body, regardless of anything else, you are enough. And it's and that is really the first step in making healthier choices in your life, because that in and of itself, that recognition that you are inherently a beautiful, worthwhile person, mm-hmm. is a healthy um, choice. And I tweet that a lot. You'll see. If, I don't know if you're on you know, yes. Twitter very much, yes. but yes. I put that out there a lot because I want women to understand that that it is a choice in how we perceive ourselves. We do not have to be waif, that waif thin actress to feel good about ourselves, to feel successful and secure right. in who we are. 
Yeah. You know, what's funny, though, is, you know, I'm telling the story about me being thin, and, you know, my daughter being thin and how we kind of both handled mm-hmm. it a little differently. But what's funny is the people that they see on TV, the people they see in the magazines that have been photographically altered mm-hmm. to look thinner, you know, is what we look like. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. reality is like, you guys are idolizing these people, right? Because you see them in, on TV and, you know, mm-hmm. he adds 10 pounds or whatever. You see them in the magazine. But then when you see it in real life, to you, it doesn't really look like that person's eating or healthy. But that's what you idolize on TV. And so this is right. this twisted, almost warped way of thinking. And um, it's just so funny to me. It's like you would never go up to someone and say, oh, honey, you're so fat. Do you, have you ever right. thought about stop eating? You know what I mean? I know it. That's so true. So- uh, although they do get that, you know, <laughs> they do get that that discrimination. So, yeah. but you know, and it's not about the su- superficial media promoted idea of beauty. It's really not. It's about uh, pe- people, women, you know, caring enough about themselves, loving themselves enough mm-hmm. to create a health, healthy, happy body, one that will allow them. Um, a better quality life yeah yeah so yeah so it's not you know it's it's not the size two or the size 14 right it's yeah it's taking that step to say hey you know I really am worthwhile I am inherently beautiful so that's the key that's the first step I like that (laughs) because you know you know how you get so bombarded with all this stuff in the media and pretty right if you fall into it you lose you kind of lose what reality or what that starting point of reality really is. That is so true because, you know, advertisers, they lead people to internalize their standards, right? Mm-hmm. And that's, I mean, that's pervasive. And so that's the thing. You just take a stand. So let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Now, you have, when you have your clients come to you and, mm-hmm. you know, they have these distorted views of their self or I would say mm-hmm. distorted self-image views or, you know, distorted feelings about, you know, how they feel or look or that kind of stuff. What do you, what do you do to help them see that their image, what they're, how they're seeing or viewing themselves is distorted, but also how they're, how they can, you know, change that distortion to something Mm -hmm. that's positive and really embrace that? Well, that's a good question. And when they, when they, disclose or they talk to me about their, how they're feeling, I always try to, you know, let them know that, um, that that is society's standards about what's beautiful. And I try to gear them in such a way to start making healthier choices because, um, and, but it begins with, you know, that choice to learn to hear their inner voice of health, mm-hmm. if you will. Right. And that real, so, it's not me saying you have to do this, you know, that kind of thing. It's, right. It's getting them to understand and to hear that inner voice of health, that to realize um, that to help them realize that moving forward with these choices uh, um, will will then definitely that are coming from them, mm-hmm. only them, um, will really be that's really a loving way to treat yourself. So, and then you know they soon learn that every time that they make these healthy choices that they're strengthening their pathway, if you will, to better health. So, um, yeah, it's it's really just about kind of guiding them a little right. bit. Right, uh-huh. Yeah. So do you tell them, I mean, because, y- you know, um, we all, well, I, I think anybody, uh, any of us that are in the healthcare profession, mm-hmm. or, you know, we strive to, of course, ourselves live with optimal health and wellness, and mm-hmm. then we try to just, you know, display that, not display it, but just, you know, pass that Off on. the talk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, you know, kind of pass that on mm-hmm. to, you know, people that we see. But um, optimal health and wellness, or optimal wellness, or that can be, that can have, I guess what I'm trying to say is each person mm-hmm. can have their own definition of optimal health. That is true. Yes. And, and so what what how would you describe optimal health? Well, I would describe it um you know, something that it's essentially what it is is the culmination of healthy lifestyle choices. Mm-hmm. And it results in the body functioning at peak level, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, it the way the body's supposed to function with energy, with vitality, with you know, it, 
just you know optimal physical performance, a longer lifespan. Um, you know, it's it's more than just the absence of disease. A lot of people think, well, I'm not sick. You right. know, but you look at you see that they're riddled with back pain, joint pain. You know, they're they're taking medication for one thing or another, and that's not optimal health. And fatigue is not optimal health. Right. You know, so it's not just that one thing. It's a combination of things. It, you know, better sleep. Optimal health health will create better sleep, which will give you even more. Um, it becomes like this amazing, wonderful cycle of health. Everything mm-hmm. that you do is like adding a deposit to your healthy bank account, if you will. So, yes, optimal health is something that... Um, is more than just the absence of disease. Absolutely, I like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, because you know you do hear people say, "Well, I don't. I'm not sick," and and then mm-hmm. they'll say, "But you know my, you know my my knee aches, or you know I, I, I suffer from migraines, or I have I get a headache, or mm-hmm. you know I get this headache every day at two o'clock, or <clears throat> excuse me, mm-hmm. or um you know some you know some little something right. that they don't attribute to that. Well, okay. To me, optimal health and wellness is you don't have anything going on with you, no headache. Right. You know, but... um, Yeah, and there's always something here and there that can happen, but overall, your body is functioning at peak level. Right. So... Like that, you yeah. guys. Optimal health is your body functioning at its peak level. Right. Without any of that stuff going on. Now, you know, you can take my grandmother, for example. She's Mm -hmm. 98 years old. Oh, bless her heart. I know, and she's now... She, though, um, has lived a very long life, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you you know, she she doesn't have anything wrong with her, but she's in a wheelchair, right? Mm-hmm. She can stand up and walk, but not very well. She's tired a lot. Right. She's, her thinking is foggy here and there. She has memory issues here and there. So um, that's not optimal health, okay? Even right. though she has nothing per se diagnosed wrong with her Mm -hmm. she is not optimally healthy right unfortunately right so yeah so that's an example of uh, you know an exaggerated example of you know somebody without diagnosed conditions living not with optimal health right okay you guys so right there is a, a golden nugget for you guys to really absorb and think about what's in the context of your own life and in your own health and wellness. Um, mm-hmm. Because if you, if you are thinking that you are healthy and well, but you still have these complaints about things, you may want to re reevaluate yourself and re-evalu- your, reevaluate your goals with regards to mm-hmm. your health and wellness. Now let's get into the, um, well, hmm, I'm trying to think. I really, mm-hmm. really am intrigued about um, learning more. I, you know what I want to do? I'm just going to jump in. We're going to move you guys into to this segment because I feel it's really important, and then we'll come back to some other things with regards to optimal health. But I'm because I have this expert here, and this is her topic of expertise, I want to dwell into it. And so what we're going to do is talk about inflammation and mm. the role that inflammation can play in weight gain in other areas um, mm. of our health. So, So Dr. Lori... Tell us exactly what role does inflammation play with regards to our weight? Inflammation is the core cause of most illness, Mm -hmm. disease, faster aging, and weight gain. It's the core cause of weight gain. So when you, you know, you inflammation is really an immune system issue. And there are two types of inflammation. One is that, that stub toe, that black and blue swollen ankle, that nasty head cold, um, that painful sunburn, that is acute inflammation in action. Mm -hmm. And it's acute and it's necessary because without acute inflammation of that sort, our bodies would not heal. Okay, so Mm -hmm. very necessary part of of our immune system. There's another type of uh, inflammation called low-level or silent inflammation. And this type is, um, it's there, it's lurking there 24-7, and we don't even know it, okay? Mm-hmm. So it's it's damaging, you know, um, 
it damages all through there is it's causing damage all throughout the body our brain hearts lungs wherever it wants to land it it will and it ends up causing diseases like heart disease obesity uh diabetes cancer alzheimer's disease you name it osteoporosis it's out it's it okay mm-hmm. and um so when your immune system is out of whack in this sense then this low-level inflammation takes hold, okay? And you can look at it more like um, a sore that you would have on the outside of your body. Uh huh. It's like having a sore on the inside of your body that doesn't heal. Mm. And the problem is, is we can't feel it. And that is why it's so dangerous, because... We don't feel it until symptoms appear. Right. And then you know once those symptoms appear that those those condition processes have taken place. So what we want to do is we want to prevent inflammation, reduce it, and keep it away, okay? Mm-hmm. For good, forever. Mm-hmm. So in order to do that, um, you know, you have to understand, well, what are these uh, triggers? for this low, low level inflammation. Right. And um, one major trigger is what we eat, okay? And the most inflammatory food out there is sugar. Sugar is the highest inflammatory food out there. What happens when you ingest sugar is you get... Wait, Dr. Rat- Dr. Lori, hold on one second. Okay. I just want to... You guys... <laughs> Did you hear that? Sugar. Sugar. G-A-R is one of the most <laughs> inflammatory foods. Exactly. That can cause inflammatory mm-hmm. or inflammation in us. So I, I just wanted to pull that out and emphasize sugar. Okay. Go ahead, Dr. Lawrence. Yes. And it's true. And, um, you know, when you ingest sugar, you get this rapid rise in blood sugar, mm-hmm. then this super steep drop. That action right there, and it's very quick, de- you know, depending on the food you eat, like sugar, super quick, immediate with sugar. Um, that action right there is inflammation, okay? And <clears throat> to top it off, when you eat sugar, you're triggering the hormone insulin. Well, insulin... Its main function is to store fat, and it likes to keep it there. Mm-hmm. So sugar, it comes in many different uh, forms, okay? You know, plain table sugar we all know about. Um, high fructose corn syrup, which is in sodas, uh, is, is, is in particular very dangerous. Um, it's in carb- refined carbohydrates, so it's like white flour products, right. desserts, you know, potato chips, things like that. So you want to um, reduce these carbohydrates that are refined, okay, because or ideally avoid them, you know. So minimize or ideally avoid these these types of foods because what's happening is you're, create, you're setting yourself up for inflammation. You can't feel it. If you were to feel some, some type of um, being uncomfortable, if you will, when you ingested sugar, chances mm-hmm. are you wouldn't eat that much of it. Right. But it's causing that sore to continue inside your body every time you do it. You can't feel it, but it will eventually rear its head down the road. Oh, I like that. You know, I, I, I kind of I'll tell this little quick story about mm. my adventures with sugar. I was a sugar addict. <laughs> I'm gonna admit that I was a sugar addict all growing up. I would rather eat candy. You know, dessert, mm-hmm. could be sweets, you know, versus food. I, I, maybe that's why I was a skinny kid. I don't know. <laughs> but um, there, it was, it, you know, and I still say I still love desserts and sweets. But about mm-hmm. four years ago, during the Lenten season, I decided that, you know, I wanted to be true to myself and, mm-hmm. uh, and give up something that I really, really love. So mm-hmm. I gave up sugar. And wow. me being a sugar addict was amazing. The first three days was pretty tough. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not going to deny that. It was pretty tough. But after the third day, I completely lost the craving for sugar. And then when it was brought in front of me, I didn't want to because I didn't want to go back, 
You know what I mean? Right. So, you don't want to go back. Uh-huh. And, you know, when you're eating healthfully, you're eating the right foods, yeah. you don't really crave it very rarely. And there's a supplement called, for example, chromium picolinate, uh-huh. which when you take it, it literally takes the sugar cravings away within day, within a, two days. Your sugar cravings are gone. And um, so I, I highly recommend that for people who want to get off sugar and um, – not ever crave it. So take it every day. Not only does it help you with balancing your blood sugar, with stopping those sugar cravings, but it also helps create lean muscle mass, which is really important. Say it again. I know what it is, but I want the Mm -hmm. audience to say it one more time. Sure. If you want to uh, balance your blood sugar and get off of that you can get off of those cravings that you have, that that incessant desire for sugar. Mm -hmm. Think about taking chromium picolinate every day. It will also, on top of that, it will create lean muscle mass. And lean muscle mass is key in uh, reducing weight if you have weight issues. So um, you want muscle. You don't want fat. You want muscle in your body. Love it. Okay, that's a golden mm-hmm. nugget, you guys, because I didn't do that. I didn't. I didn't do the um, chromium picolinate. Mm-hmm. I didn't do it. I just did it. But but at the end of my Lenten season, so I was gonna celebrate. You know me. <clears throat> you know I'm kicking a forty day habit of sugar. So this is so funny. We were getting ready to go to Aruba for spring break, right? Mm-hmm. This is, you know Lenten, and um, I went to Seize Candy the day before we were flying out and bought me two two pound boxes of these candy nuts and chews <laughs> get down to Aruba you know it's Easter I can celebrate by having a piece of candy opened up the candy had one or two pieces and really wasn't feeling it I mean it tasted Love that. Good. yeah tasted good and very all that. good yeah <laughs> I ended up leaving the boxes of candies for the housekeeper because I just really wasn't you know really wasn't feeling it and fast forward now four years later um I still don't I, I, you know, I know I still like the sugar, and I can take a bite of a candy bar, or you know, a, 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 you know, eat half a cupcake, or take a bite of a brownie or mm-hmm. something, and that satisfies me. But I don't want anything beyond that. I don't have those cravings anymore. And and people are like, you know, they know I work out and all that, and they're like, well, have you lost weight? What have you been doing? And I said, well, I just kind of mind my sugar, mm-hmm. you know. That's and, so true. Uh, Be- because the, you're reducing that tr- that trigger of uh, insulin. Yeah, and by doing that, that has popped up. You know, here I was going mm-hmm. to the gym, pumping iron with the guys, and trying to get cut and all that. And I was, you know, I was bulking mm-hmm. up and looking fit and all that, but I didn't have the cut. So then, drop, you know, thinking, okay, you know, I really have decreased the sugar, and so now here I am. I still work out. I just change it up a little bit. You know, I run a, a lot more, but. The cut and stuff that I was looking for, lo and behold, now it's coming mm-hmm. because I'm not loading up on sugar like I was. I, I mean, it's just, it seems so simple and the results yeah. are so, you know, you can see them. But to put the two together is like trying to match the pieces to the puzzle and you just kind of, you're doing it blindly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. I know. You did it, though. Yeah. You know, you did it. It's you're, funny. That's a great example. Yeah. I, I, um. I, Know that you know it can be done. It really can it be done. It can be done, and it can be. And I see it every day with my clients. It's not a horrible thing, especially if you have something like chromium picolinate to take every day. You'll be fine. I mean, it's just that simple. So um, yeah. So you want to reduce. You want to live an anti-inflammatory lifestyle. That's the key. You really want to think about um, choosing foods that, like the Mediterranean diet, which emphasizes um, emphasizes whole foods that are, you know, high in fiber, unrefined, unprocessed, minimal to no sugar, um, no trans fats, because these foods are all such as, you know, fruits, veggies, uh, whole grains, all are just um, that contain something called phytochemicals, and they all are super, super beneficial to your health. They are really um, what you need for super health, optimal health. Um, A lack of micronutrients, such as these phytochemicals, Mm -hmm. create cravings and they create poor health because we're missing these very, very 
uh, important minerals and vitamins and enzymes and phytochemicals, plant chemicals. And so when you ingest these things, you're preventing those cravings and you're filling your cells up with everything that they need to do to uh, create better health for you. So they're fulfilling their function optimally, which means you're going to feel really good. So that's what you want to do. Uh, and in doing this, you're going to drop the weight. And I focus on this in my book, Fire Up Your Fat Burn. I talk about uh, the importance of making sure that your plate is half veggies and one quarter whole grain mm -hmm. and one quarter lean protein uh, for the most part. I give a couple options, but that is the one that most people choose. And, um, and in doing that, you really um, are going to stop that cascade of events that happens when um, you're eating unhealthy. So, you know, which is then causing inflammation in the body, low-level inflammation. Like it, like it, like it, love mm -hmm. it. So now... Um, with regards to, you know, how there's always this talk about um, you need to drink the eight to ten glasses of mm -hmm. water. And, you know, we we all know that we're either 65 or 75 percent water depending or 85 percent depending on which medical text you read. Right. Um, what role does water play in weight gain in helping us to have optimal health? Well, water is critical to optimal health and to weight loss as well. You know, our bodies are mostly water. And our brain is 80% water. Mm -hmm. So it's fat and water, really. Um, and unfortunately, most people are walking around mildly dehydrated and they haven't a clue. Just like they're suffering from uh, inflammation, right. low-level inflammation. They don't realize that they're mildly dehydrated. And so they're suffering from joint pain, from headaches, hunger, and as I mentioned, weight gain and so much more. Um, and so when you are mildly dehydrated, your cellular function slows down, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's why um, when, you know, you're, you have foggy thinking or you're tired, it's because your cellular function has slowed down. You know, your brain cells aren't functioning optimally without that water. And uh, also, too, when your cells are hydrated, they are functioning, functioning optimally, mm -hmm. and that means so is your metabolism, okay? So, but when you don't have enough water in your body, you slow that uh, functioning down, that cellular functioning down, and, so, and then you slow your metabolism down. And so <laughs> water is uh, thermogenic. It, meaning that it fires up that fat burn. Mm -hmm. It also does it in another way as well. So when you drink water, even room temperature water, the body warms it up to uh, the water, to body temperature. That action right there um, helps with weight loss as well. Oh, wow. So now does water play <clears throat> the ingestion or taking in water or hydrating ourselves? Mm -hmm. Um, does that have any role in helping us with our inflammation? Um, yes, because when your cells aren't functioning optimally, mm -hmm. that means you have low-level inflammation going on. So a lot of people think, I'm, I don't need to drink water until I'm thirsty. Well, right. <laughs> when you're thirsty, you're already 1% to 2% dehydrated. So you need to stay on top of it. And that's why um, I was asked to right uh, a reporter asked me if I would comment on why water is not necessary for wom women and I said I can't comment on that because water is highly necessary for right. optimal health right not just for women but for, for everybody, everybody yeah. and for weight loss as well now I, I'm, I'm going to dwell off um, mm -hmm. kind of a little bit here, but, you know, um, with regards to water and keeping us healthy and, you know, keeping things functioning optimally within our body, mm -hmm. um, you know, have you heard, I know you have, um, about the push or this, new, I don't know if it's a fad, I don't know what really to call it, so I'm not, I'm just going to say about the alkaline water. Mm -hmm. had, no, yeah, there's some credence to that. Okay. I mean, it, it, yeah, there is. You you want you don't want to you don't want a body that's too acidic. Right. 
So when it's when your body's too acidic, disease processes can take hold. You know, people who eat too much meat, for example. Mm-hmm. And I I advocate eating eating meat. Okay, I'm not saying don't. I'm just saying I absolutely do because I eat meat myself. Mm-hmm. But there are people that eat it for every meal and right. snack. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? I know and it becomes people. like the star of their plate. Uh-huh. So, um, you know, it's yeah. So eating a lot of Protein can uh, create an acidic body, and um, a lo- you know just by having more of an alkaline body, you're creating better health. So keep just keeping that thought in mind, uh, focusing on fruits and veggies, and and uh, water, alkaline water definitely can help with that. Oh yeah, because I I know there's um, a lot of that is starting to surface with, with regards to water and mm-hmm. you know the benefits of um, the alkaline water and things of that nature. So I thought since we have you right. on the show and you're you know you're you are the expert mm-hmm. with regards to this, I just thought I'd throw that question. It, I just, yeah, I that was a good it. question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, very good question. Thank you. So now, okay, so I'm gonna go back a bit, mm-hmm. guys. Now. With regards to achieving optimal health, can you give the listeners um, some basic action steps that they can take um, that can help them with this? Yes. I would say the first thing to do right now is to drink water. (laughs) (laughs) You know, that would be the first thing. The second, I would say, is to – I'd like to see them – really minimize the sugar in their diet. And you don't have to do it cold turkey like Rochelle did. Mm -hmm. But just, you know, um, start to slowly let it go. Look at purchasing um, a very inexpensive supplement, chromium picolinate, and take one every day and you will see amazing results, okay? Start um, making sure that you, um, you know, when you go to the store that a lot of everything you buy is close to nature, if you will. Uh, the you know lean meats, uh, brightly colored fruits and veggies, green leafy uh, uh, veggies. You know anything that is not processed or refined. Yes. You want to stay away from all of that. And with, and while you're off of sugar, you're not going to be wanting all that stuff anyway. It's amazing how when you go when you minimize sugar, you will you will also reduce your craving for carbohydrates as well. Mm-hmm. So it's it's really a win win, and you just end up being a healthier person. You end up just starting to make better choices. So yeah, look to eating um, more fruits and veggies, whole grains, all you know, complex carbohydrates like this will not metabolize quickly and mess with your blood sugar. They'll definitely keep you healthier. So get rid of those sodas. If you if you do drink soda, um, each can of soda has 10 to 15 teaspoons of sugar. Now you can imagine sitting down and eating 10 teaspoons uh, or 15 of sugar a day, Ooh. just a granulated sugar. Right. Imagine doing that every day, multiple times a day. Right. Of your life. That's what people are doing. And I just told you that sugar is the most inflammatory food, if you can call it that. Right. So I would say to uh, also avoid trans fats. Uh, They're man-made fats, and the body doesn't know what to do with them, with these things like sugar and um, trans fats, because... You know, sugar is a, is, a, is a processed food. Trans fat is a processed food. So, you know, they're dangerous because they raise your, your bad cholesterol, mm-hmm. if you will, mm-hmm. and they lower your good cholesterol. So those are a few uh, tidbits. And I would also say to pick up exercise. If you're not moving your body, you are then inflamed. Okay, you have mm-hmm. inflammation going on. So moving your body, even if it's walking around the block or standing up and doing squats, and squats are just simply um, standing up and bending down. If, and if you've never done one, hold on to a chair. Mm-hmm. Just bend down and keep your back straight. Just bend down um, um, as if you're going to sit on a chair. Okay, mm-hmm. do that five times, a couple times a day. Do something to move your body. Love it. 
Mm-hmm. Love it, love it, love it. So you guys, she gave you some really good basic action steps to take with regards to, you know, helping you to achieve this. And the one I really, really like is, um, you know, of course, increasing the water and increasing the veggies and, you know, mm-hmm. but you guys, I, I, I just want to pull out. Well, I, let me go back. The one I really like that I didn't know about was the cr- chromium picolinate mm-hmm. to aid with helping decrease, decrease the sugar. You know, the oh, sugar. It works helps. so well. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to go really out and get does. some. Even though I've got it yeah. under control, it, it won't hurt me to take it. No, you know, it's actually very, of, very good for you. I know in it has other ways. Other, yeah, I know, yeah. I know it has other good benefits. And, we'll, and we, there are, su- if anybody wants uh, a list of supplements to reduce inflammation in their body, they can just contact me. I will be more than happy to send them that list. Okay, and we will give yeah. you guys that information on how you can contact Dr. Lori mm-hmm. before we go. Now, the other thing I want to point out to you guys is the processed foods. And Dr. Lori, can you just, mm-hmm. because, you know, people, we're in this fast, move fast, go fast, do faster, be faster, yeah. oh, 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 society, and it's crazy. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, people think a lot of times that what they're grabbing is something natural and not processed. And so right. can you just give people a bird's eye view of exactly what processed foods, when they go in the grocery store? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're in the bread section, say, you pick up a loaf of bread and you see it's brown and it says wheat bread on there, you go, okay, this is healthy, and you throw it in your basket. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look at the label, you see that it's the first ingredient is white flour. Even though it's brown, it's been dyed to make it look healthy. And it just says wheat flour as the first ingredient on there. What it should say is whole wheat flour. When you see the word whole before any grain in the ingredient list, you know you're on the right track, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is, you know, and a lot of, you know, sugars and candies and donuts and all that good stuff, they uh, are processed refined foods. Fast foods are processed refined foods for the most part, not always, for the most part. Um, You want to be careful of labels, uh, you know, that say light um, or they say trans fat free um, because they can still, if it has less than half a gram, they can call it trans fat free. Mm -hmm. So look for the word hydrogenated uh, oil on the ingredient list and you'll see that, if you see that, that it has trans fats in it. Um, And, you know, potato chips, chips, all that stuff. Now, there's a chip out there. I did a segment on Good Morning Texas where I did a eat this, not that. And in one of them, um, I swapped out regular potato chips for something called Benitos. Mm -hmm. It's like spelled like a bean, B-E-A-N-I-T-O-S. And it's really a very healthy product. It's low glycemic, meaning that it doesn't create those high blood sugar spikes I spoke of earlier. Mm -hmm. It keeps the blood sugar stable. They're they're made out of beans, but they taste unbelievably good. So um, I had the... uh, the host of the show, he just couldn't get enough of those. So, <laughs> you know, but they're very yummy, and you aren't missing anything. You're getting four grams of fiber per serving, and they are healthy and they're super good for you. So, um, that's an example of just making sure that you have the knowledge to go when you go to the store that you're getting the right things. Make a list, plan, and prepare your meals. Don't become a victim of your of your environment. Mm-hmm. So bring your lunch to work, you know, because you bought all those healthy foods, right? So you want to keep you want to continue it throughout your day. So bring your snacks, bring your lunch, you know, go out once in a while, but not every day, um, because that way you control what goes into your body, and you're not at the mercy of anybody else. And um, and I would say definitely. Um, Make sure that you uh, are definitely educated. So pick up a magazine, pick up some books, and just start reading about uh, how to create better health. And that way, you are on the right track. You're taking a very important step forward. Beautiful, 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 beautiful information. Um, 
I I don't even have anything to add to that. I mean, I think it's pretty <laughs> self-explanatory. Basically, if I had to add something, I would tell people, read the labels. <laughs> mm-hmm. read, read the labels, them. absolutely. Yeah. Get to know what you're eating, yeah. Exactly. You, yeah. you would be amazed, you know, at um, what, on that label, that product that you think is healthy, it's you know. Oh yeah, check it out. It's so uh, true. If you, if you don't do anything today, when you go to the store or the next time you go to the store, just pick up something and read the label. And I always say, if you can't pronounce it, if you don't know what it, if it's polytechnical, you know, by by hydrogenated trans fat, triphosphate something, if, yeah. If you don't know what that is. I guarantee you it's not good for you. <laughs> well put. <laughs> funny, but um, so I keep it, try to keep it simple because, you know, mm-hmm. it makes it easier for people to, to uh, incorporate. Now, mm-hmm. um, what role does fat, F-A-T, <laughs> yeah. play in our weight gain? And And we've heard that before, haven't we? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Fat, again, the right type of fat is going to help you burn fat, okay, for weight loss. Now, it also, healthy fat, will um, create optimal health. So see how these two uh, connect and are interrelated? All these things that we do that create optimal health also create weight loss as well. So it doesn't take an Einstein to figure it out at all. So once you start figuring out what's healthy for you and what isn't, you're on the right track, okay? Mm -hmm. So omega-3 fats are very important for you. And the reason is is because we get, because, of course, they um, cellularly, there's something called, I'm going to give you a little bit of science just just for a second. Mm -hmm. Um, On the ends of our DNA, we have these end caps okay, that protect our DNA, and they're called telomeres. And as we age, and every time our cells divide, these caps get shorter and shorter. So when, that, when we lose our telomeres, then that cell dies, and eventually um, our whole body, of course, we end up dying in the end anyway. But right. to keep these telomeres long, to keep it protecting and dividing the way they should be dividing, um, we ingest, we need to ingest omega-3 fats, very, very healthy for us. They also are thermogenic in that healthy fats um, such as um, cold water fish, for example, or um, sardines or walnuts, things of that nature, are very good for you. Avocados are good for you as well. You know, think, but very healthy fats um, help you respond more efficiently to a hormone called leptin. And and leptin is the Greek word for thin. So um, leptin is what signals your body or your brain, rather, to suppress your appetite so that you you feel like you've eaten enough, Mm -hmm. that you've had enough food. And it also, leptin, increases your metabolism by increasing your thyroid output. So very important to encourage uh, um, healthy fat eating. You know, you can get those in nuts and seeds and, um, you know, like in cold water fish, like I mentioned. You can take flax oil, krill oil, chia seeds, you name it, it's out there. So look for healthy fats. Um, I have a list in my book, Fire Up Your Fat Burn, that will do, uh, that has it all laid out for you. Um, So what happens in terms of our weight, paradoxically, if we don't um, have enough healthy fat, Mm -hmm. we can't burn off excess fat. Right. So that is the problem. You know, it makes it, you know, it just, it doesn't, it seems uh, counterintuitive, right? That if we're not eating fat, then how can we get fat? Well, you remember the low fat craze. Oh, And that has created part of what we're seeing today because (laughs) people... Um, are still afraid of eating fat. You see on packaging, that's another thing to be careful of. If it says fat-free, you know that it's loaded with sugar or white flour or something like that. And white flour is metabolized just like sugar. So, uh, you know, so very important. It's vital for us to consume healthy fat, definitely. 
Perfect. Love it. Love it. Love it. And I do, you guys, highly recommend um, getting some flaxseed oil or chia seed or um, taking your omega-3s. Olive oil. Olive oil. All those healthy oils. You know, you won't. You will find olive oil at the grocery store, but you won't, I don't think you'll find flaxseed or Mm -hmm. some of those other oils, not unless your grocery store has an uh, organic section um, or you go to someplace like Whole Foods or something like that. But really just doing that little shift um, in Ayurveda, we we also recommend people, you know, uh, utilize ghee as a healthy oil, but mm-hmm. whatever whatever you know you decide to do, if you just make these little shifts in your life, um, you will decrease your inflammation. You will be able to stabilize your your mm-hmm. weight gain and decrease your you know decrease your weight and get get back to a healthy size. You will feel healthy and vibrant and and have this optimal health because you're decreasing the inflation your inflammation. You're taking in the water. You're you're eating your right. Your brain is functioning properly. Yeah. 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 You're you preventing heart attacks, strokes, exactly. cholesterol is better. Everything exactly. immune function. All those underlying yeah. things that they're like little time bombs waiting to go off that you mm-hmm. just don't even know about. And so it um. Uh, dang, I, we're, we're at the end of our show, but it's like, it went so fast. It did. It seemed like I, we just started. We have so much more to talk about. Oh, I have to, have to bring you back because. Um, I know. I'd love to come back. But we will We will definitely have Dr. Lori back because, um, you know, she's obviously fabulous and have a lot of information. Thank you. That will help us. Thank but you. before we go, I want mm-hmm. people to know how, because you have some good things that, you know, they may want to reach out and touch you and pick up on. Tell them how they can get in contact with you and also tell them how they can get a copy of that book. Absolutely. You can find my book, Fire Up Your Fat Burn, on Amazon. It's in print and on Kindle. You can find it on Amazon. And you can also go to my website at DLS Healthworks, DLS health works and there's a plethora of information there for you to start educating yourself and learning about better health and weight loss um and it's it's all over the website so you know please feel free to just make yourself at home there and also if you like my book is there as well so and you can contact me dr lori at dlshealthworks.com that's my email address dr lori at dls healthworks.com and I'd be more than happy to send you that list of supplements or any other questions you may have. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Lori. And well, thank got- you, Rochelle. It's been an honor, truly. Oh, no, it's been an honor for me. You guys know that I will have her links on the website. If, you, if you're, you know, listen to the show all the time, you know I will have links that you can connect with Dr. Lori on the website. But if you're not and you're a first-time listener, just know that um, her information will be on the website as to how you can connect with her if you really want to get up close and personal and get some of these goodies that she has um, to offer. Or if you just want to work from with her, I'm sure that can be arranged. You know, we have some fabulous technology available to us today, so it's not really necessary. Are you in Texas, Dr. Lori? I am. I'm in Dallas. So oh. when I work via phone, Skype, or in person, See? So, all of the, I'm international. <laughs> that, so that's why I'm saying if you guys really want to reach out and touch her, um, you know, you will have the opportunity to do that and just connect with um, with me and her on the website, okay? And, by the way, I love Dallas. Next time I come Oh, to thank you. I, thank you. Up. Hurry back. <laughs> oh, then I was there like three or four times last year. So. Oh, my goodness. We'll have to get together when you we come will. back. We will. We will. Yes. Um, but, okay, you guys, I'm sorry this show is – we're coming to an end of another fabulous show, and it just goes so fast when you get just so much – vital and um, pertinent information that you can utilize in your life right now, right, right now, the information, because we're absorbing it like a sponge, the time just goes by so fast. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lori Schmeck, for being a guest thank on the you. show today. I loved how we were able to learn about inflammation and how we can decrease our, um, you know, our, our break our habits to, to sugar that's going to help us have, you know, of course, optimal health and wellness and decrease the inflammation and the, the role water plays and, and the foods and, and um, supplements that we can take to help us feel so much better. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, and I want to thank so much. Oh my gosh. I'm sending you a big hug. Big and, hug. Uh, 
And I want to thank all of you guys for taking time out of your day to listen. We thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy um, giving this information to you. And I would not be able to do this if I didn't have a fabulous audience like you guys listening to me each and every week. So big hugs and kisses to all of you. And with that, I'm going to end the show. And as always, you know, you guys, I'm wishing you uh, peace to your mind, wellness to your body, and tranquility to your spirit. Thank you so very much for listening to Blissful Living. And uh, we'll chat or you with you or I'll be able to chat with you next week. So take good care, everybody, and uh, have a fabulous day. You can find out more about Rochelle on her website, Rochelle Lawson, R-O-C-H-E-L-E Lawson, L-A-W-S-O-N, or at healthhealingwellness.com. Or just click on her websites from the webtalkradio.net page right in front of you. And, of course, you'll want to come right back here next week for another episode of Blissful Living. Thanks for joining us.